This is what I got for the time waveform. It's important to first check the time waveform to make sure you're applying the DFT to the correct waveform. If your time waveform doesn't look like this, make sure your Nmax is an appropriate number for the Gaussian modulating a sinusoid that we chose. In other words, if you kept Nmax at 50 time steps, as it was for the square pulse, you will have modeled only the very beginning of the Gaussian modulating a sinusoid. And as a result, the spectrum will also be wrong. So it's very important when calculating the DFT of a waveform that you account for the full time waveform of the source. If you abruptly cut it off, the time waveform and the spectra will be incorrect. Now in this time waveform, it looks like a solid blue block. This is just because there are lots of oscillations occurring along the, the length of the Gaussian. For example, if we zoom in on the peak of the time waveform, as I've done here, you'll see that what looks like a solid block of blue is actually just a lot of oscillations from the sinusoid, which has a fairly high center frequency relative to the width of the Gaussian. And for the spectrum, I got this. As expected, it's centered at 915 megahertz, and the spectrum of the source extends from about 902 to about 928 megahertz. Now, to create an optimal system for detecting people buried in the snow, we would likely want to use a more complex source function. For example, we would probably want a time waveform where we could apply advanced signal processing methods to the received signal. But this is a good starting point for creating and testing the 1D Maxwell's equations model that we want to build to test our radar system. Remember when we were developing our Maxwell's equations model, we determined that we needed at least 10 cells per wavelength in all of the materials and over all frequencies of interest. Now we know that because the square pulse we used earlier involves a wide range of frequencies, the grid resolution of one meter that we used previously was not able to resolve very well all of the different frequency components of the pulse. So this is the reason for the numerical error in this result that we obtained earlier. Now that we've developed an improved time waveform for our source, the Gaussian modulating a sinusoid, that will adequately resolve all the spectral components in all of the materials we plan to model, as long as we set delta equal to 4.3 millimeters. So try putting this new source into your 1D Maxwell's equations model and see if you get better propagation results. Make sure that you change delta from one, megame one meter to 4.3 millimeters. And since the pulse is a lot longer in time steps than the last one, we should increase the size of the grid in order to see the full pulse before it reaches the end of the grid. So I recommend you set IMAX to 25,000. We have 25,000 grid cells. And also we should increase the number of time steps in order to allow the pulse to propagate across the grid. So set NMAX equal to 20,000. Lastly, set the same EZ component, so EZ at I max divided by 4, and we're going to set that equal to the Gaussian modulating a sinusoid waveform expression that we developed that has spectra from 902 to 928 megahertz. So I'm just going to write here the source waveform, and you can fill that in during the time stepping loop. For this Gaussian, Gaussian modulating a sinusoid, we used t half is 2 over pi times 13 e6, and we used t naught is 3 times t half, and we used the center frequency of the sinusoid is 915 e6. Lastly, since the grid is so large, the code is going to run a lot slower. What particularly slows down the code is plotting the results every single time step. So to speed up your code, I recommend you plot only every, say, 200 time steps. You can implement this in the model by using mod n, 200. Mod n 200 calculates the remainder of 
dividing n by 200. So this will equal 0 only every 200 time steps. So you can write if this mod expression is equal to 0, there's supposed to be two equal signs there in a, for this if statement, then you can plot. Also, I recommend you change the number in the pause to a smaller value. So pause maybe 0 0.001 to speed it up a little bit. And lastly, in this simulation, the results will be easier to view and understand if you set the axes of the plot so that they extend from 0 along the x-axis to i-max. So you can set the axis here using a parentheses and a bracket 0 to i max. So if you don't specify the axis, it's going to just auto-generate auto the axis and it's going to uh, adjust the axis whenever you get new values uh, in the y direction. So this is going to set the ax x axis from 0 to i max and we're going to specify the y axis to go from minus 1 to 1 since the time waveform we're we're going to be putting into the Maxwell's equation model has an amplitude that only varies from minus 1 to 1. And you can put a colon here at the end. You can try commenting any of this out to see what happens if you don't include these lines or use different values. So give this a try and play around with whatever numbers you want and we can compare our results on the next slide. So I'll go ahead and write here an end for that if statement.